Hello and welcome to another video. So it is clear again, which is great, but it is about 70% moon, which isn't the best really for Astro, but it's not clear here that often, so I don't really want to waste the night. Now, there are still a few things that you can do uh, when there's a full moon, and uh, those sort of things are, you could just shoot the moon, but that's not really my thing. Um, you could go and take some foreground shots because the moonlight lights them a lot better and then you can um, uh, replace the sky later on those with other composite images. Uh, or you could, um, I've just been looking into um, using filters. So I've not got one yet, but apparently if you shoot H-alpha using H-alpha filters, then the moonlight doesn't affect it as much. So you could still utilize clear nights on a full moon shooting H-alpha, uh, or you could do what I'm gonna do tonight, and that is to shoot some star trails. Now, I'm, I'm not gonna try and pretend that the star trails will be just as good if there wasn't as the moon there. So if it was a new moon, it'd still be better, but it's still better than nothing. So I'm gonna show you um, my technique on shooting star trails and then how to process them as well. Hello, uh, right, so uh, before we jump to the computer and I'll show you with the screen recording, let's do confession time. So I have um, massive schoolboy errored and managed to, I took my test shots, they were in focus. I've then put on the lens warmer and I've not taken any more test shots afterwards. I've just let the entire time lapse go. And uh, there are 440 shots that are all out of focus. So uh, this is this is not only going to be uh, an interesting tutorial. I guess it'll be a little bit of a how to uh, how to claw your way back from what could be a ruined night. So realistically, with this, because we're shooting star trails. So there's there's my test shots. Yep, all good. Then I put the lens warmer on and out of focus, all out of focus. Uh, realistically, because this is a uh, star trails, the worst thing that's gonna happen here is that the stars are out of focus, so therefore it's gonna bloat them. So actually they'll look slightly bigger in the trail, so I'll get away with it. And because I've taken my test shots, I can just replace the sky back over a sharp image. So I've, uh, I've got away with it, but just make sure after you put a lens heater on that, <laughs> that you take another test shot. Right, what we're gonna talk about then is, first things first, is uh, the difference between, um, you see images of colorful star trails, which is what you want, uh, versus you see the images that are just of uh, completely white stars in the star trails. And I uh, used to take my images that way, um, and it all boils down to the exposure. So basically, if you, if you expose so that the whole um, whole frame is completely exposed right, you'll be blowing out the stars, you'll make all the stars look white. If you underexpose, which is what we're gonna do in this tutorial, this is what my underexposed test shot looks like. And it's, uh, I've shot at 135 millimeters, I've shot at F5.6, I've shot ISO 800 in 15 seconds. Um, and what that's given me is, as you can see here, this image is, is exposed right over to the left. It's, um, it's quite underexposed, but you can see, because of that, there is color in these stars. And that's the difference. If you were to expose uh, so that this was um, fully exposed to the right place, what you would be doing is blowing out all of those stars and they would just have completely white star trails nothing wrong with it just that if you want the colorful ones this is how you do it so yeah so that's that's my exposure settings um what we're going to do is then i um, import all of my photos into um, lightroom first and then what i'll do is just a general um, edit over the lot of them so all i've literally done with this is i've upped the shadows because obviously it was quite dark up the shadows right to the top and then the only other thing that i've done is um sorted the vignette out on this on this lens so that's literally all I've done and then I just um, select that select all of the photos as I say there were 440 of them and there we go and then you select all and then just click sync and then that will sync across all of the uh, all of the photos right so um, the uh, but the easiest way of actually processing your star trails is with a piece of software called Star Stacks, and that's free. I'll stick a link to Star Stacks down below. You just download that. What we'll do is we'll go into that now. Um, sorry, what I, what I also did then was export 
the, um, export all of these frames into a folder on the desktop. Um, if, if you want this to be the best quality, then you'll export it, them, each of them as TIFFs and then run them through as TIFFs. But uh, for the purpose of this, and also my final image that I'm showing as the thumbnail that I'll be posting everything, it's all just done with JPEG. So it's, you know, it's, uh, it's fine using as JPEG. If you're gonna print, I guess you could use it. You could export them as TIFFs and then run them this way as TIFFs. It, you get a better image, but realistically, yeah, it doesn't really matter. So anyway, this is Star Stacks. It's pretty straightforward. You just top left, and that's where you're gonna open your images. Then you go to those images, select all, open them. They'll all be in here. Um, over this side, go to gap filling, go to comet mode, all the way to the all the way to the far end long trails. And then all you literally do is click this one, which is the process. And what you could do is um, either in Lightroom first or once you've um, exported them into here, go through each of your frames and just see if there are any with planes in. So you see this plane that's coming across now, that will eventually work its way, or that will work its way into the image and there'll be that a plain streak across the image. Um, if you've got a lot of photos like this is 400, 440 photos, what will happen eventually is that the, uh, the plain lines will be taken over by other star trails so it doesn't matter so much but it, it probably is still worth your time to go through each of them. Um, also I find that with the star trails that if, I mean, if you've got entirely cloud covered then take those images out as well but otherwise if there's just a few uh, clouds that are in there in the frame they will stack on top of each other with uh, with star stacks as you can see there's some cloud here and they eventually sort of work their way back out um, I guess you'll see what I mean in the final image so basically all you do is click um, hit start processing what you can also do is save after each step which I have done previously I'll stick the time lapse of each of those shots going through, uh, just so that you've got them. It saves each individual one, then you can stick that in a timeline and run a time lapse with it. Uh, but be warned, it takes twice as long, literally twice as long. It took me 40 minutes to run 400 shots through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into Photoshop and show you the final Star Stacks image, which is this. This is what's come out of Star Stacks. Um, and this is what it means by the comet mode. That, it looks okay, it looks pretty decent. I really like this large one that's gone right through. Um, I've taken the plane out and you can just see the uh, clouds starting to pull through there. So that's the easiest way of doing it. Next way of doing it is in Photoshop. And what you can do is you go to file, you go to scripts, and then you go to load files into stack. Then you go and browse, Find those files, select all, open those files, uh, just make sure that it's not going to turn it into a stack. Yep, so make sure they're not ticked, and then just click OK. And that'll take a long time as well. What it'll do is it'll work through each of the files. I, again, I've already done that because, yeah, I, I shot I shot this Chatsheets video last night and it took like, like an hour. It was, uh, yeah, it was painful. And this, is what the final image looked like. Just all you do is you load all the files. They then uh, all appear, 400 will appear as layers. What you do is you select all layers, then go to here and select lighten. And, and that will then just um, stack all the images together, create the star trail. This is the output from that. It, it looks okay. I think it looks better than the one out of star stacks and um, obviously this plane I've left in there, so we'd need to take those out, or what you can do is, is laboriously go through with a spot heel brush. Click once, hold shift, click again, and it will do a pretty good job of working through those, but as you can see here, there's gaps in the lines there. Let's show you again. Shift, click, and click. As you can see, it's, it's done an okay job, but it's not the best, so you would be best removing those uh, plane trails first. But the last way of showing you is using a paid software and that's called Astro Panel. So um, it's my preferred way of doing it, uh, but, but it is paid software. So you can just use either the free star stacks or the, um, the uh, light and blend mode by running them through Photoshop. But it, yeah, if I just show you through Astro Panel as well, open it up, go to Fusion, go to Star Trail, 
and then I turn on Comet Effect and Rotation Direction. Then just click on the lights and find your images, run them all in, and then just click Blend. And the final image of that one is here. And I, I just think it looks a lot cleaner um, compared to, let's go to the Star Stacks one, compared to the one that's just on the, light, on the light and blend mode. But realistically, they are very similar. It's just these, um, these trails of the planes need to be taken out. Apart from that, they are really quite similar. Okay, so this is my final image. And as you can see, the, the tree is uh, out of focus and then I've got all the sheet blurred all over the place on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to Lightroom and I'm going to pick a photo that was in focus. And this is actually from when I moved slightly down the road, got a slightly better angle on it so that they didn't have the um, uh, the bushes in the corner over here. What we're going to do is I'm going to edit in, open in Photoshop, and then the first thing I'm going to do is just uh, increase, I'm going to go to Camera Raw, I'm just going to increase the shadows on this foreground, and I'm just going to sort the vignetting slightly on this foreground. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Star Trail image, I'm just going to click on the layer, Command and C to copy, go back to this image and Command and V to paste that in. I'm going to unlock that, move it to the bottom, and then we're just going to mask out the sky here. So we'll click on the quick selection tool, select the sky, click select and mask, and then make sure we're on the refine edge brush tool and plus I'm just going to run the line along the horizon and then I'm going to just paint that tree back in and then just finish the line on that horizon. Then go over to the global refinements and then I'm just going to do what I always do which is one, 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 one. Click invert, we're going to decontaminate the colours and then you can play with this of um, 100% is making some weird marks on there. Let's drag it down, maybe 70. Let's try 70%, that looks okay. Click okay. And then that's gonna pull through the lower layer. So I'm just gonna click on that star trail layer and then Command and T to transform, just to stretch it out and get rid of that tree that is below from the other layer. And that's looking all right. Hit enter on that. Okay, I'm gonna flatten that image. It's up to you, you don't need to do that, but I'm just gonna flatten it. And then we're gonna start working on this. So let's go into Camera Raw. I think I do want some more shadows. I wanna play with the vibrance there. I think I want a little bit of clarity. Maybe a tiny bit of dehaze. I don't want it to get too dark. Um, you could play with the temperature if you wanted to. And what I think I'll also do is go to the HSL sliders and just bump the saturation on most of them. I reckon that green is probably a little bit too green. Um, and the blue as well of the sky is a little bit too much. I'm just gonna dial it down a little bit. But yeah, and the rest of it looks pretty good. You could play with the luminance of them if you wanted to. but. I'm not gonna recommend it. I might try and change that blue slightly lighter. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. Not too much to do. Click OK. And then I'm just going to sh sort out the sheep on the horizon. So what I'm gonna do is go to the uh, spot heel brush. And I'm just gonna work through them. Get rid of those sheep. might not do a fantastic job, oh I did actually, on the horizon there. And what you could do instead is go to the clone stamp 
and you just click Alt and select the part that you want to clone and then you just paint that over so you would be able to paint that and get rid of the sheet that way but it normally does a pretty good job with spot heal so you can see that the plane's just going through there but it's it's not too bad it's mostly removed it so that's it you could go into camera raw and do as much of the processing as you wanted to but this is it, this is the final image. I'm quite happy with that. I hope this was useful. Realistically, what, what it's not necessarily about the um, post-production as much. It's about how you shoot the star trails. And if you slightly underexpose those stars, you keep all of this color in all of the stars. Uh, whereas if you bump the ISO too far, then you'll blow it out. You'll just have completely white stars. That's it, I hope it was helpful. If you do make anything using this tutorial, please tag me when you post it on Instagram or whatever. That'd be great. And uh, that's it. So thank you very much for watching and I'll hopefully see you again soon. Take care.